That's quicker than usual. All right. Cause formula. There it is. There's the live stream. Oh, hello, Ad. How are you doing? Oh, what's this ad for? Car insurance? Looks like it. I think that's car insurance. Yep, that's definitely car insurance. Right, right, I can hear myself, that's good, and I think the game audio should be working, it usually does. So everything is running, that is fantastic. Hello everyone, and welcome uh, to the 21st round of the AM1 Championship here on Contest of Speed. I'm Lane Everingham, your commentator for this event. We're back, and this time we're at Circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya for the Spanish Grand Prix. This 2.87 mile 16 turn circuit was opened in 1991 and in real life it doesn't have many positive connotations. Jude tends to be quite noticeable, making it difficult to follow any car in front of you and in turn difficult to try and overtake anybody. In the virtual world however the racing isn't that bad. Uh, from my experiences here, the circuit has provided, on occasion, some really great racing. Don't get me wrong, it can be boring Barcelona at times, but uh, the racing, I like to think, generally, is pretty solid. Most of the overtaking on the circuit happens at Turn 1 and the no longer existent hairpin of Turn 10, with a little bit of help from DRS. There might be also a little bit of battling into the sweeper of turn 4 and the hairpin of turn 5. In terms of hazards, the drivers must be incredibly wary of the very fast right-hander of turn 9. The drivers will be on the edge of grip when they're making their way through the uphill bend. If they exceed that limit of grip, they will more than likely crash into one of the barriers lining the racetrack. Forecast, uh, the forecast for today is slightly overcast with no chance of rain, but there's still plenty for the drivers to worry about through the race. But first, they must make their way through qualifying. But before we focus on that, just a little bit of news from last week's race at Silverstone. Now, there were a few incident reports. The majority of them came up with no further action. There was a five-second penalty handed to wing it after a minor collision with Nicholas. Uh, Nicholas Lactifi, that is. Um, but considering that wing it didn't end up finishing that race, the results effectively stand from last week. Nobody gets shuffled anyway. Looking in the championship standings, Pesassin leading the way. He's on 303 points, we know that. Barmer has closed in quite considerably. He is on 279 points, so he's 24 behind the championship leader. So there's a real chance that he can become the outright driver's champion. Uh, Cameron is third on 176. And uh, rather funnily enough, Cameron's account on PSN got uh, suspended uh, for some reason. I think he illustrated why in the Discord chat, and I don't really go into... I don't really want to go into much detail about it <laughs> uh, live on stream. But um, he is in the race, and he's got a fantastic username. <laughs> Triple B underscore Bubba Booey. I'm going to have so much fun with that, not going to lie. I am going to have so <laughs> much fun with that. But uh, Cameron is third on 176 points. Barmer is 4th on 174, followed by Andy Wu on 167. So a pretty tight fight between those three. Next is KD on 145. He's still very much in contention uh, for that fight for third. He just needs some really solid results in these final four rounds. Then it's uh, Nicholas Lactifi in 7th, followed by Aaron Carey. P-Dog Payton and Kitten Petter rounds out the top 10. As Preferred jumps up to the top, setting the first proper flying lap and that's beaten promptly by electric blade a one minute 17.8 a whole second quicker uh, than preferred looking at the constructors championship it's pretty tight at the top to say the least aston martin are leading on 465 points followed by mercedes on 456 nine points separating the top two with four rounds left i 
I imagine it's going to go down to the final round at Yes Marina, that championship. It is just incredibly close. McLaren are third on 233, followed by Alfa Romeo, the car on screen now, on 208, then Alfa Tari on 203. So pretty tight between those three teams, McLaren, Alfa Romeo and Alfa Tari. Rest of the table looks like Ferrari in P6, followed by Haas, Alpine, Williams, then Red Bull at the bottom of the table. But that's pretty much it in terms of news. We can now fully focus on this qualifying session. And I'm kind of excited for this one because Spain, because it's not a particularly long track, as I mentioned, only 2.8 miles. It's quite a quick lap. Current times hitting about 77 seconds, a minute and 17 seconds. So I imagine qualifying is going to be quite close. It's going to be fairly entertaining. Also dry conditions, so he shouldn't have any wet weather interference at any point during quali. So I imagine it's going to be fairly intense stuff out on track. Currently Barmo is sitting pretty at the top of the table with a 17.3. Currently three tenths clear of Profo to improve by quite a bit. As a Bersi invalidates there at the final turn, he set a 17.5. That would have put him third, uh, I think. Might have been fourth. I didn't quite catch the full time. But somewhere towards the top of the table, Express has jumped up to P2 with a 17.3. There's Freddy on the medium compound tyre. I'm actually not too surprised that a couple of drivers might try and set some times on the mediums. Yeah, look at that. Barmer. He set his best time on the medium compound tyre. We've got a few drivers out on the mediums now. Kit and Petter being one of them. I'll tell you what, I might give Kit and Petter a bit of screen time here. We'll give you a proper guided uh, group. Yeah, I can't speak. Guided tour of the racetrack. This well known 2.8 mile 16 turn racetrack. Lap begins here at the final turn. You want to get it absolutely right. So then you can maximise the straight line speed down the pitch straight. Got DRS wide open. Climbs into top gear. He begins his lap. He's making his way down towards the opening chicane. Turns one and two. There's a yellow flag there in the middle sector. It's an Alpha Tari. Through turn one. Then turn two. Short shifting there. Avoiding that inside curve at turn two. Very easy to ride the curve awkwardly. And spin out, exiting the long sweeper of turn three into turn four, a potential overtaking spot. We might see some opening lap drama here. A bit sideways action just after the apex there from Kit and Petta around the hairpin of turn five. Using a bit of the curve on the exit. Around turn six into seven and eight. Very easy to invalidate a lap here, but Kit and Petta does no such thing. Around the very treacherous turn nine. You can see the back end wanting to step away, but Kit and Petter keeps his car under control. Into turn 10, this doesn't exist anymore. Same with this little kink, turn 11. That's always infuriated me ever since I started league racing back in F1 2019. Exiting turn 12, around turn 13, and into the worst chicane in Formula 1, turns 14 and 15. It's just a flow-destroying exercise that really shouldn't exist. Exiting the final corner of turn 16, crossing the line. Pretty nice lap from Kit and Petter. 17.846 on the mediums. That's pretty respectable. Preferred, he's getting ready. He's just started his out lap. Barmer getting ready to set a flying lap here. Down the main straight away. He's on the soft compound tyre, you can see there, with the red sidewall. Heading down towards the opening chicane. He'll slam on the brakes for T1. Get it down to fourth gear. Keep it. Oh, and there's the inside curb at turn two showing its teeth. You can see if you just ride it ever so awkwardly. So easy to lose the back end. It's rather brutal bit of track. There goes Baba Bully. I'm really going to enjoy saying that. <laughs> oh. Motown has backed out of a lap. Uh, hello, Nicholas. You're right behind Motown. What? 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 What's going on between these two? I wonder. There's a McLaren just behind. Hello, Andy. He's on an outlap getting ready. Uh, I'm... Whoa. Uh, what's Nicholas up to? 
going over the sausage curbs there on the inside. And he's going back into the pits. That's what he's doing. Lopez is making his way out of turn five. See, they're using all of the curb on the outside. What you need to do there. Into this tricky complex of seven and eight. As I mentioned, very, very easy to invalidate through there. Through turn nine. Very nicely done from Lopez as KD jumps up to the top with a 16-5. That is very quick. And I think he did that on the mediums as well. He did. That's very quick indeed. Coming down the hill around turn 13 into 14 and 15. Riding the curve there very nicely. Maybe a bit too much rotation coming out of 15 perhaps. Opens DRS, crosses the line. Motown's disqualified for parking in a dangerous location. Where are you? You're at turn two, I think. Yes, you are. Well, here's the AI not really knowing what to do. Hello, Codemaster AI. See, they're sporadically just turning left. Very strange. JCK. In the Red Bull, he's making his way around turn three. You have to be very committed through that right-hand sweeper. You have to stay on throttle, 100% throttle, all the way around. You can't lift. Maybe a hint of understeer from JCK there through turn four. Coming out to turn five. Oh, a hint of oversteer on the exit as the back end steps out. Through seven, through eight. Back end stepping out a bit more. Up the hill around turn nine. Or how's the car going to behave here? <laughs> this car does not look stable by any means. <laughs> the back end is stepping out left, right and centre. What's Baba Booey up to? He's doing a bit of uh, rally cross, which they do here at Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. In fact, this part of the circuit he's on now, this is part of the rally cross course. But they go in the other direction. Oh, the bur As Baba Booey spins. Oh. oh, and he spins again. <laughs> uh, such is the nature of overcooked tyres. Into the hairpin of turn uh, 10. Oh, I just noticed Bursey's invalidated his lap. <laughs> Electric Blade getting out of the way. Using all of the runoff area there on the outside. For Fodes, I think he's backing off as well. Rather surprisingly, we still have five drivers yet to set a lap time in this qualifying session. Bursey, he's going to have a go here. Down in 12th place at the moment with no time next to his name. Same goes for Bubba Bowie, Matty Robbo, Chasey K, and Nicholas Lactifi as... Well... It seems that Bursey... Uh, Invalidated his lap at the very first opportunity he got entering turn one. Oh no! Oh well, he, he well he's got five and a half minutes. I wouldn't say he's got plenty of time, but he's got a bit of time up his sleeve, just a little bit. As I've mentioned before, it's a fairly short lap here at Barcelona, so you've, out laps and in laps are pretty quick. Ah, you'll be right, Gibby man. <laughs> you'll be right. Long race here, usually at Barcelona. Safety cars come out fairly frequently, so if you keep out of trouble, you can find yourself uh, putting yourself in the right place at the right time. You can gain quite a few positions out of it. Alternatively, you can go aggressive right at the start. Try and make up positions early when everyone's bunched up. Uh, let's see. Freddy, you're on a flying lap. Making his way around turn four. He's just improved by a tenth and a half in the first sector. He needs some milk, you reckon, Kits and Peta? Well, Peta, you, you could probably do with a bit of speed right now. You're 1.3 seconds off pole position. What's going on, Peta? As Electric Blades retire from the session, Lopez has done a Hakkinen. And uh, Freddy has invalidated his lap. Cam's making his way down towards turns 
one and two, the opening chicane. Yellow flags are out there at turn three. That's an Aston. It's Nicholas, I think. Yes, it is Nicholas. Cam completes the first sector. Up by a little bit. Just over half a tenth there. Small improvement in the first sector. Around the hairpin of turn five. Short shifting there on the exit. Using the full width of the racetrack. As you should do. Through this little chicane of seven and eight. Up the hill and around turn nine. Let's see here. What does sector two say for Cam Tizzle? It says he's up by two tenths. As I think... Ooh. I thought I saw someone go hard right there. That might have been Nicholas trying to get out of the way. I saw a car go hard right at the exit of turn nine. I got scared. Because <laughs> when you see a car go hard right at the exit of turn nine, it's typically not good. Tends to end with a big crash, a big bang. As Cam crosses the line and jumps to P4, improving by six and a half tenths. So Cam managed to find four tenths in that final sector. That's fantastic stuff from Cameron. Should be very happy with that. Barmer getting ready to set potentially his final flying lap with two and a half minutes left in qualifying. Currently P5 with a 1 minute 17.299. He set that right at the beginning of the session. He's on the soft compound tyre now. He's making his way through turn one, through turn two. And into the long sweeper of turn three. Look at the telemetry. He's keeping it pinned. Gets around the corner successfully. Down towards turn four. Up by two tenths in the first sector. Needs to find another half a second over the course of this lap. Down and around the hairpin of turn five. Using a little bit of the curve on the, out, uh, the outside. Around turn seven. Then turn eight. You can see there a bit of movement in the steering. Just trying to keep the car pointed in the right direction. Very nice turn nine there. The car looked incredibly stable. The clock says he's up by half a second in the middle sector. Around turn 11. Then turn 12. Brings it down to third gear. He'll probably short shift. No, he doesn't. He uses all of third. Interesting. Around turn 14, 13. Then through 14 and 15. And around turn 16. The final corner on the racetrack. Up towards the line. Barmer jumps up to pole position. With a 1 minute 16.4 exactly. That's a very nice looking lap time. I have to say. KD though. What can he do in response? I believe he's on the medium compound tyre. Yes he is. He needs to improve by a little under a tenth and a half. If he wants to reclaim pole position at this stage. We'll see if anyone else is capable of improving. Andy's on the flying lap and he's up by a tenth in the first sector. Making his way down towards the hairpin of turn five. Brings it down to third gear. Doesn't bother to use second here at turn five. Gets a nice drive out of the corner. Profodes is on a flying lap I believe. He's now making his way around turn three. KD he's up by 75 thousandths of a second. Can he find any more time over the course of this lap? Yellow flags there, it's Fredhead, I think. Pretty sure that's Freddy. Or oh, it might have been Nicholas, actually, as Freddy's still driving. Hello, Freddy, how are you doing? So it was Nicholas off in the gravel trap there at the exit of turn nine. KD making his way around turn 13 as Baba Booey jumps up to the top of the table, beating Barmer by 16 thousandths of a second as KD ducks back into pit lane. So his qualifying is done. Andy Wu has jumped up to third. Profodes, he's bailed out of his flying lap. Matty, I think his qualifying is done. Express is making his way out of turn nine, down towards a hairpin of ten. See what the first sector says. Uh, second sector, rather. Down by half a tenth. See if he can improve here in the final sector. Dream getting off the road there. His teammate... Oh, he invalidated his flying lap. So um, he'll be starting from the back in 16th place. Not where you want to be, but uh, I suppose it could be worse. Kitten Petter crosses the line and jumps up to 5th place. That's where your speed was, Kitten Petter. You saved it until right at the end of the session. 
Jumping up to fifth there with a 16.7, effectively. As Dream retires from the session, I believe they'll be qualifying over. It's Cameron. Cameron Bababui on pole position. <laughs> By a very slim margin as well. 16,000 separating the top two at the end of qualifying. You're saving yourself for marriage. <laughs> uh, nah, that's just, <laughs> that's fair common, I suppose. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll just have to wait until I think Baba Bowie retires or he gets parked up into his garage and we can move on to the race itself. But it's a Mercedes Benz 1 2. How many times have we said that in the past eight years or so? Andy Wu will line up in third place. He'll be pretty happy with that, I would think. Starting third here in Spain. Alongside him will be KD, if I remember. Yes, it's KD. He'll be the first driver on the medium compound tyre. Look at that, only a tenth and a half of pole position. That's a that's a pretty solid effort there from KD, and equally so from Kit and Petter. On the medium tyre, he was only three tenths off in fifth place. Profoe, <laughs> he's got a Qatar flag <laughs> in P6. Cam in P7, Matty Robbo in eighth, Express in ninth, Bursey in tenth, Electric Blade in eleventh, Freddy in twelfth, and Dream, Nicholas... Lopez is the last driver to set a lap time. Then JCK and Mota. Mota got disqualified. JCK couldn't put a lap together over the course of qualifying, so he'll be starting from P16. Oh, I could guess what that four letter word is, Cam. <laughs> I've got at least two in my head of what that word could be. That censored four-letter word could be. <laughs> but as you can see, slightly overcast conditions, but according to the weather report, we shouldn't see any wet weather interference, which is fantastic. Dry races are definitely better compared to wet ones. Just off my experiences, anyway, doing commentary in F1 leagues. Now, strategy here... Is it? Uh, medium hard the ideal strategy I think that's the ideal strategy is a two stop even viable around here oh god it's been a while since I've raced at Spain and I think the races that I have done here at Spain are usually littered full of safety cars so if we get a completely green flag race I'll be quite surprised it's just the nature of Spain. Just delivers a lot of pain at times. Pun intended. Still waiting. I'm, I'm guessing we're just waiting on everybody to get their setups in order. And we can move on. Hopefully it won't take too much longer. Drivers could fine tune their setup. Maybe trim off a bit of front wing. Try and get a bit more straight line speed. There's the session counter now. They can also fiddle around with tyre pressures, which is something you couldn't do in previous games. So if they wish, they can lower tyre pressures, so then they can get less tyre wear. It's rather a neat little thing you can try and do. Of course, drivers will be fine-tuning what lap to pit on, if it is green flag from start to finish. <sighs> and also deciding how much fuel they want in the car. And even with the chance of safety cars I imagine not too many people will be under fueling because they don't want to take that risk <laughs> as drivers creep away off the start right oh very very slow start there typically people are a bit more sprightly than that when getting off the line but anyway let's have a look at who's starting on what tire so we've got a few drivers inside the top 10 starting on the medium compound we'll go from first to last and see who's on what so we've got Bubba Billy here on pole position, going off the racetrack. He's on the soft compound tyre. His teammate Barmer in P2, also on the soft compound tyre.
Right. Yes, Andy, soft compound tyre, third place. I don't know what Palmer Bowie was doing. <laughs> KD, fourth place. He's on the medium compound tyre. He's the first driver on the medium compound tyre. Ketan Petter in P5. He's also on the mediums. Followed by Preferreds in P6 on the soft tyre. Same with Cam Tizzle in seventh. Matty Robbo in eighth on the medium compound tyre. Express in ninth on the soft compound tyre. Followed by Bursey, also on the soft compound tyre. Funnily enough, every single driver outside the top 10, none of them are starting on the softs. <laughs> Not a single one of them. So all of the drivers starting on the soft tyre, they're inside the top 10. Electric Blade in P11, he's starting on the mediums, followed by Fredhead in P12 on the hard compound tyre. Dream is 13th, he's starting on the mediums. Nicholas Lactifi starting on the well in 14th place. Starting towards the back, Lopez, he's on the hard compound tyre. He and Freddy are the only two drivers starting on the hards. JCK, P16, he's starting on the mediums as Lopez spins in front of him. And Motown Motor City will be starting from the back in 17th place after getting disqualified in qualifying. He'll be starting on the medium compound tyre. So we've got eight drivers on the mediums. We have got two drivers on the hards. We have got seven starting on the soft compound tyre. So a fairly healthy mix of strategies here for the start of this Spanish Grand Prix. Let's see what this race has in store for us. We got 10 red lights and we are underway here in Barcelona. It's a fine start from Barma as they head down towards turn one for the first time in this race. Oh, KD trying to look down the inside of Andy Wu. Oh, a dearie me, and Alpine goes deep. I think that's Profodes. Went awfully deep there into turn one. He made contact with the car and he spun round at the opening turn. Coming around turn three, a bit of side-by-side -side action here. As they head towards the sweeper of turn four, it was Profodes. He's down in last place now. Oh, maybe a bit of contact between Express and Cam as they're exiting turn four. Down towards the hairpin of turn five. Cam fights back down the inside here at the hairpin. Forces the Alpine wide onto the gravel in fact and here comes Matty Robbo to take seventh place through turn seven then turn eight up towards the treacherous turn nine how will the drivers deal with this in race conditions dealing with all the dirty air it seems that everybody gets through pretty okay down towards the hairpin now of turn 10 a big send from Express a huge send he overcooks the corner massively oh my god goodness he went way way off he's on the uh, brand new circuit he's that far off dearie me oh it couldn't have been a worse start for the alpines they're now last and second last couldn't be a better start for the mercedes-benz drivers though it is baba Bowie leading from barma a mercedes 1-2 let's begin lap 2 of 33 here in barcelona and he maintains his third place kd is right there in fourth Kit and Petter still in P5 as well. Well done, Petter. Held on to your track position from qualifying. Good job. A yellow flag, Sex Express retiring from the race as Matty Robbo overtakes his teammate at turn three. Down towards the sweeper of four. He maintains that sixth place. Nicholas Lactifi on the back of Cam now as Fred Head and Lopez overtake one another at uh, turn four for position 13. around turn seven and eight up the hill around turn nine it wouldn't be fun here in the midfield having to deal with the dirty air you could see cam's car just slightly losing the back end there but he managed to gather it back up yellow flags that's just uh, expresses car his ai dawdling back onto the racetrack find a spot to retire didn't take long for us to have our first retirement. Man, this is close here in the midfield. Barma sets a new fastest lap with a 19.8 effectively. Down the main straight towards turn one. DRS is now enabled. You can use it when you're within a second of the car ahead in a DRS zone, as the great Jeff would say. Up towards turn four. Nicholas has got a bit of a run, but he's not quite close enough. 
to try and pass. This is where most of the battling seems to be taking place. The top three are pretty spread out at this stage. KD is still on the back of Andy. Gap of only about six tenths or so. Kits and Petters a little ways behind KD. Two seconds behind. In fact, there's Baba Bui already a three-second time penalty. It's only been three laps and he's already got one. So, uh, ew. that's not good. Nicholas, with the power of DRS, closes in a little bit on camp. Coming around the hairpin of turn 10. Yellow flags. That is... Uh, no, Motown. Motown has spun out. Ooh. Bonked the wall there. So we've had our first incident of sorts of the race at turn 9. Involving Motown, Motor City. Luck isn't really going his way at the moment. Hopefully it does soon. Andy in a bit of trouble here. KD down the inside into turn one. A fairly simple move for the Alfa Romeo driver. Seems to be a similar story for Nicholas Lactifi as he moves into seventh place. Looking at position changes here. You can see Nicholas has made up a huge amount of places over the, co uh, over the course of these first four laps. Already making up seven. This cam being overtaken by JCK down the inside there at turn four down towards the hairpin of turn five cam can't strike back down and around turn six through the chicane of seven and eight there's kitten petter and maddie robbo at the front of the train and spinning his dream oh dear he's decided to do a hack and an impression he's down to 15th with a broken front wing oh dear oh hello there are yellow flags it's matty robbo He's dropped down a few positions, down to ninth. Unlike Dream, though, his front wing looks intact. Though I know there is a spectator thing where you can't properly identify damage on the car. So there just might be. We'll just have to be observant and see what the gaps are like between him and his teammate. KD setting a new fastest lap. That's beaten by Nicholas Lactifi. As Barma goes into the lead, he overtakes his teammate Baba Bui. I'm not going to get over that username, it's fantastic. Takes the lead. Hopefully, what I think the Mercedes pair will do, we'll just try and work together and try and pull away as Dream retires out of the race. Whoa, dear me, aren't we are quitting but today. Three voluntary retirements within the first five laps. Not really a great look. Um, it's their choice, so... All good. Sparks fly there as Kitten Pe... Uh, Kitten Pe... There. KD enters... Turn 9. Just saw the McLaren fill up the camera shot and I instinctively said Kitten Petter. Speaking of which, he's... Still in 5th. He's losing a bit of time to his teammate Andy. But he's still in fifth place, and that's the main thing, though he does have Nicholas right behind him now. Only seven and a half tenths separating the two. Making their way out of the final corner, down the main straightaway. Baba Boo, we're going to have a move. He does. He looks down the inside of Barma. Friendly battling going on between the Mercedes teammates. Don't really think they're holding each other up by doing this as well. They're maintaining that gap to third. As Electric Blade makes an overtake on Cam Tizzle. He is into 8th place now. Coming around turn 4. Oh, a bit wide there from Barma. I didn't see any dust come up though. But I'm pretty sure he was off the road. But uh, KD now. Oh, hello. They changed positions. Barma's back into the lead. Okay, so I think... Cameron here, Cameron Baba Bowie, made a mistake at some point that I didn't quite catch. His KD is now right up his trumpet. I was about to allude to something as well. The two in front, they're on the soft tyre. And uh, those tyres don't last particularly long here at Barcelona. So I think even after six laps, the medium tyres will have the edge over the soft compound tyre. And there we go, Baba Bui taking out a bollard. Baba Bui bullying a bollard as he enters the pit lane. 
down the main straight. KD now has a new target to aim at, that being Barma 22, the man who is currently second in the Drivers' Championship. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. Kids of Petta, he's still got Nicholas Lactifi right behind us. Oh, hello, it's Matty Robbo again. Oh, and there's Bursey as well. There's Bursey, he's in the wall. He's hit the wall, rather. Oh, thank goodness the ghosting system was working. Sporting a um, Ricardo helmet as well in that Alpha Terry. He rejoins onto the racetrack down in 14th place. Well, Matty, he had a spin. Can't see any damage still on that. Williams? They build their cars strong over at the Grove factory, it seems. And Baba Bowie, he is closing in at a rate of knots. Down this back straightaway, quote-unquote, towards the hairpin. See Matty defending there. Baba Bowie's having none of it, though. Around the outside of the hairpin at turn, uh, turn 10 through 11 into 12. Baba Bowie has the inside line, but Matty Robbo is putting up a fight. They're side-by-side side heading towards turn 13. And Baba Bowie just says, bugger it, I'm going to back out of this. Nicholas Lactivi and JCK overtake Kit and Petta, it seems. So Petta probably with no DRS getting overtaken by both of them. Cam's gone into the pits. Here comes Baba Bowie with DRS. And there we are, easily into 10th place. He now has a fair bit of clear track in front of him. Give himself the license to put the hammer down. Freddy and Preferred's battling for position. Those soft tyres won't feel great. And uh, those hard tyres aren't gripping in too much either for poor old Freddy. A whole heap of understeer there at turn five. But fortunately, he keeps it on the racetrack. Also a battle here between Nicholas and JCK. Kids and Petter has fallen away just a little bit. He's still within a second of the two in front, but he... Just needs to uh, remain consistent, not let the two in front pull away. As I say that, the gap has just tipped over a second. Scroll back under a second, though, as Andy is in the pits. KD just closing in a little bit on Barmer. JCK closing in a lot on Nicholas here, but doesn't go for a move. Nicholas sort of half defending there at turn one. Through turn two, you have to be careful of that inside curve. Baba Bluey sets a faster slap of the race at 18.6. Uh, Down towards turn four. And JCK still can't find a way by. Now, what tyres has Andy gone on to? Mediums. I don't know if he'll be trying to go to the end on those. Like I said, it's been a while since I've raced here, so... I'm a bit clueless when it comes to the strategy. And I haven't had any um, prompt, the AWS thing, come up and tell me what some people's pit strategies are. So, yeah, I'm not too sure. Exiting the non-existent hairpin around the non-existent kink. Into the very existent turn 12. Hopefully by F1 2022, Codemasters will have the new track ready to go. Shouldn't be too difficult to make, I imagine, as Barmer, our race leader, is into the pits. Set of medium tyres at the ready. Off go the softs, on go the mediums, away goes the Mercedes-Benz. Nice clean stop there. JCK also overtaking Nicholas. That was a fairly simple move, just using DRS. Slipstream by. Get her before the braking. Very easy. Preferred still hanging on to sixth. He's doing a fairly lengthy run on those soft tyres, compared to his rivals anyway. But he's still hanging on to P6, so credit to him. Down the hill around turn 5. Freddy just three tenths behind, but uh, due to the nature of the circuit, it's going to be difficult to pass. See, with Freddy here, He's going to lose time through pretty much all the corners because of the dirty air. Especially here at turn 9 where it's a fairly high speed corner. 
the straight here heading into 10 isn't quite long enough in order for you to take full advantage of the DRS given to you. Around turn 11, then turn 12, you can't really do much through here. And it's a similar story with the final couple of corners on the racetrack. It's, there's a bit of lag there. Sector 3, yellow flags. That's Matty Robbo, I think. It is. He's driving on part of the Rallycross course, which is on the inside of the racetrack there. But uh, he's now down in 11th. Freddy now using DRS to close in on his Alpine rival. Using a fair bit of battery as well. He looks down the inside here into turn one. He pulls it up, but prefers is having none of it. He has the inside line at turn two. Freddy has the inside line for turn three. They're side by side through the long right hand sweeper. Up. up towards turn four. Freddy has the inside line. Profodes, he's trying to hang it around the outside to his credit, but he can't really do much. Freddy, he was in the dominant position, so he hangs on to P6 for now. Baba Booey, meanwhile, he's been closing in in P8. He's now. Oh, as Freddy spins, he does a hack and then. Oh. And he gets going again. He's down in ninth. Very easy to do there at turn eight. Should rename the corner to Hackenham for that famous moment. He's leading a Grand Prix comfortably and then he threw it away. What year was that? Was that mm, 99 when he did that? Oh, goodness, I can't remember. Profodes goes into the pit lane. Finally hopping off the soft compound tyres. He's done a fairly lengthy stint on them. What tyres are at the ready here? Set of mediums. Up go the jacks. On go the medium tyres. Away goes the French car. Nice, lovely stuff. Meanwhile, in third, Nicholas and JCK are still scrapping it out. Yellow flags are about. It's Lopez. He's had a moment at the opening chicane. Anyway, you know I'll do a bit of my own research, try and work out what what year was that when he did that. Um, Hakkinen crashing Spain. 2001, really? No, that was engine failure. When did he spin out? Two thousand one. Oh, I swear he spun out once before, though. Nicholas goes down the inside of JCK into turn two. I swear someone has spun. It mustn't have been hacking in then. Who was the driver who spun out of turn eight? Crash into the wall while being at the front. I can't remember. I always swore it was hacking in. But no, he had a famous engine retirement to that place in 2001. It was leading up until the last lap. Coming around turn 8. Up the hill around turn 9. JCK closing in. He's got a run. Looking down the inside, he's going for it too. Around turn 11, then turn 12. Then through the final flow destroying sector, through the chicane, KD into the pits. He'll be moving on to the hard compound tire, I imagine. JCK and Nicholas stay out. KD pulling up to his pit box. Hard tires at the ready, on they go, away he leaves. Bubba Bui, Barma overtaking KD. KD should come out in front of Fredhead though, so he's in relatively clear air in P6. And if I remember, those hard tyres aren't too bad. Crash, right, turn, Spain, Spain. I swear there's been a crash there.
Hmm. Maybe my memory's wrong. Right. Hmm. I remember history the wrong way. <laughs> Coming around turn 12. Gap of half a second between these two. Not too much battling going on throughout the rest of the order. The gaps are pretty stagnant at the moment. Though Matty Robbo and Andy Wu are pretty close to one another. Six tenths separating the two. DRS open down the main straight. Nicholas pulling to the inside. Trying to break the toe a little bit. And here comes JCK. Where does the... Red Bull driver, look around the long way here at turn one. Can't get it done though, through turn two. He's all over the back of the Aston, and he spins. He spins on that inside curve, that horrible inside curve. Here comes Electric Blade. He's gonna have to go around the long way here at turn three. Uh, fortunately, uh, JCK has found enough speed to not make any sort of mess with uh, Electric Blade approaching him. Oh, but that inside curve at turn two. It's just so brutal when you get it wrong. You either have to avoid it all at all costs, or use all of it at once. You can't be in between. If you just use a little bit of the curb, that's what happens. Car just loses all grip, and you spin out. Baba Booey is now on the back of this battle. I love the alliteration I've got with Baba Booey's name. Down the hill, around the chicane. Oh, and JCK goes in. And Matty Robbo is bringing out yellow flags. What's going on? He's, he's on the rallycross course again. Not sure if he was helped. I know he and Andy were fairly close together on the racetrack. Don't know if there's a correlation between the two though. Baba Bowie versus Blade gets a three second time penalty there at turn three. So now he has six seconds worth next to his name. Very wide line at the exit of turn four there. Lovely aerial shot here looking over the racetrack here in Barcelona. Down the hill around turn six then around turn seven and eight. I mean, up the hill and around turn nine. Baba Booey, will he have a go? Down the inside, into turn ten. Nice, simple move. Nothing brash, nothing too difficult there. As Lopez brings out yellows. Here at turn four. Gets off the racetrack there as Matty is approaching. Hello, Matty. Cam, a three-second time penalty for multiple warnings. Nicholas out in front, enjoying the clear air that's given to him. Send some pretty nice laps out in front. Next car is Baba Booey. He still has Blade behind him. <laughs> I love the alliteration. So good. <laughs> But uh, Blade, he's got uh, 16 lap old mediums on that pass. So he'll be pitting soon. From the looks of things, he'll be trying to pit onto the soft compound tyre. Barmer in fourth place on a set of mediums. KD has been closing in, though, little by little. He's almost within a second of the Mercedes Benz driver. Next is Freddy on six lap, uh, 16 lap old hards. He's yet to make a stop. So he'll be more than likely be hopping onto the soft compound tyre for his final stint. This isn't KD. See, I'm supposed to be spectating KD at this point, but I'm still spectating Freddy. I still love this glitch. It's great. Still in the game. Fantastic. Love it. Around turn 16, the gap is 8 tenths. KD will have DRS and he'll close in even more by about mm, maybe 3, 3.5 tenths, I imagine. DRS, let's see. 8 tenths, 7.5, 7, seven tenths, 6.5, so about 2.5 yeah, tenths. A bit less than I predicted. 
Lopez, he got a three second time penalty, I think, as well. Oh, I just caught that. <laughs> Round turn four. The race is sort of hitting that phase where everything's a bit stagnant. There's not a lot of action going on, but you do kind of expect that in the middle of the race. No one's desperate enough to go for positions just yet. Everybody's sort of in their own safety bubble. Not only that, but we've also got pit stop rotations still to take place. Once those pit stops happen, maybe we'll have a few close battles on track. Who knows? KD very deep on the brakes there into turn 11. You can see how much he closed in there into that hairpin. Around turn 12, over the small crest down the hill, around turn 13, and into this horrendous chicane, 14 and 15. Oh, I pray one day they get rid of that chicane. One day. It's by far and away the worst chicane in Formula 1. Think that's Matty Robbo. Yeah, it's Matty Robbo. He's at turn 8. He's spun. KD goes around the outside of Barma. Barma tries to fight, though. Can't do too much about it, it seems. KD is into fourth place. Barma, though, he's using a lot of battery. He's sitting in the slipstream, but he hasn't got enough momentum to try and overtake KD, try and take that fourth place back. So he's stuck in fifth for now. Still got a lot of racing to go through, folks. We're only on lap 19 of 33. So still a lot of racing to unfold. Bit surprised we haven't had a safety car up until this point. It's a little bit surprised. Barma sitting in that slipstream. Closing in. He's pretty confident on the brakes too. Electric Blade just in front in P3 around the sweeper of turn 12. You have to be patient here. Don't want to be too eager on the throttle, otherwise you'll lose the back end. Around turn 13 into the chicane of 14. Oh, as the back end steps out for Barma, he just rode the inside curve very awkwardly. And in turn, he lost a whole heap of time to KD. Well, whole heap of time in reference to KD anyway. Lost about two tenths or so. Round turn two, oh yeah, see how much steering input he had there when he ran, uh, ran over the curb at turn two. He straightened that wheel to make sure the car didn't rotate when it hit the curb. He was that nervous running over it, using a bit of the grass on the outside as well there at turn four. Katie now closing in on electric blade. Around turn 7, around turn 8, up the hill towards 9. Opens DRS down towards the hairpin of turn 10. Not quite close enough. And the sweeper of 12, half a second separate the two. Wonder if Electric Blade is thinking about pitting soon. JCK overtakes Kit and Petter as well. That was for P8. Blade stays out for another lap. KD, he's within three tenths of the Haas driver. Using a fair bit of overtake as well. Pulls to the inside. A simple move. KD, he's into third. Now we got uh, a new factor to consider here. KD's in third place. This is provisional second as Matty Robbo and Lopez. Get three second time penalties. I think Blade made a mistake as well when, when I wasn't looking. He has. Look, he's down in fifth now. Barma's overtaken him. So perhaps Blade got unsettled at turn two. Lost time. That would be my educated guess. But yes, KD's in third at the moment, which is provisional second once Nicholas makes his uh, necessary pit stop. Bubba Bowie, aka Cameron, he's got six seconds worth of penalties. So... KD, he doesn't necessarily have to catch up and try and pass Bubba Bowie here to try and take the win. All he needs to do is close in by enough, stay within six seconds of him, should be able to take it. That is, of course, with the notion that KD won't get any more penalties himself. Well, won't start getting penalties, or he should stay. KD doesn't have any at the moment. 
But if he does get one, it will change the scope of this battle quite a bit. Begins lap 22 of 33. Got 12 laps to go. We're entering the final third of this Spanish Grand Prix. Barma now with a three second time penalty in fourth place. That's not good. He that, that means he can't battle KD outright on track. Unless, of course, KD gets some sort of penalty. Um, hmm. What's going on here? This is the closest battle on track at the moment. Kit and Petter and Profodes, they're making their way towards turn four. The Alpine's closing in rather quickly. See their Profodes on the mediums. Kit and Petter on the hard tyre down towards the hairpin. Not close enough. Not quite close enough yet. Profodes having to deal with all the dirty air coming off the McLaren, but he's de dealing with it quite well. Exiting turn nine down the back straight, quote unquote, towards the hairpin. The Alpine isn't quite close enough just yet. Around turn 11, then turn 12. Matty Robbo setting a new fastest lap. Barma getting overtaken by. Oh! Two stop. So Barma's on a fresh set of soft compound tyres, and I believe Freddy's in the pits too. Getting off his 22 lap hards. Going on to fresh me, uh, fresh sauce. Preferred's getting by. Kit and Petter, now can the Alpine driver get by Barma? He's just behind, his tyres are up to temperature, Barma's aren't. Mercedes hangs on. Coming around, turn 7, then turn 8. See now Barmas is pulling away those fresh tyres. They've switched on fairly quickly. JCK down the inside of Andy Wu here. He's into P5 as Baba Bowie goes into the pit lane. So the Mercedes driver's doing a two-stop. Interesting. Well, I don't think they'll catch KD then. KD will be a long, long way in front. Granted, we do have quite a few laps to get through, and you never know, there might be a safety car at some point, but uh, KD, he's got very healthy margin in hand. Leaving the pit lane, Baba Bui, he has got 14.7 seconds between him and KD. Got 10 laps to go, it's like 24 or 33, so 10 laps. He needs to close in by effectively one and a half seconds a lap. Is that impossible? No. It's just a very tall mountain to climb. Not only that, but Bubba Bowie's tyres towards the end of the stint, they'll be worn to a buggery. And also, the six second time penalty he has next to his name means that if he wants to take the win, he would have to overtake KD and then have a margin of six seconds. So. Hmm. Yeah, it seems that KD has got this one at this stage, but again, a lot of racing to go through. KD now takes the lead as Nicholas Lactifi has just completed the fantastic 24 lap stint on the medium tyres, finally hopped on to the soft compound tyre. JCK on the back of Andy Wu making their way out of the final turn. There is Barmer on fresh tyres. Closing in at a rapid rate of knots. Down towards turn one. Don't think he'll have enough momentum to attack JCK. You could also see JCK sort of half defending, half attacking Andy Wu. <laughs> half attacking Andy, half defending from Barma. There, I reckon. Around turn four. Um, trying to find some sort of run here on these two. Trying to get by a little bit of extra rotation 
there at turn five as he ran over the inside curb. Around turn seven, then turn eight, up the hill towards nine. JCK, have you got a run here on Andy? Maybe a hint of understeer there at turn nine. Barma, I don't think he's close enough. JCK not close enough either to try and make any moves. Gap is now 12.7 seconds between the top two. I'll try and keep the audience at home constantly updated on that gap as we search for battles on track. Bubba Bowie, there's the pace that he's got. An 18 flat. Pretty quick lap time there from Bubba Bowie, so he's going very quickly out on track at the moment, desperately trying to close that gap to KD. JCK and Barmer and Andy. It's three wide entering turn one, and it's Barmer who comes out on top. That inside line on the grippiest tyre. Just asserted himself. He decided to be brave, and he got rewarded for it. He's now into fourth place. Maddie Robbo, a three-second time penalty. Multiple warnings. No, it pays off being brave. Barmer going well down the inside. Being on the grippy soft compound tyre that's still relatively fresh, he could just slam down on the brakes, pull up for the corner, and maintain his fourth place. I believe that was Matty Robbo bringing out yellow flags as well. I think he's currently off the racetrack now. There he is there. Yeah. Not a great day, I'd say, for the Williams driver. But he's still soldiering on, and you have to respect that. Never want to quit. Never, ever. Always want to keep digging, no matter what the situation may be. Ah, uh, ba ba battle, 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 battle. Blade. Six tenths behind Preferred, who so was on 14 lap old mediums. Those mediums would be fairly cooked by this point, and those sauce are only just getting started. Coming around turn three, closes in by two tenths through those first three corners, such as the speed of those fresh soft tyres. Coming around turn four now, he closes in that little bit more. There's Andy Wu, hello Andy. There's Kit and Petter at the back of shot. Coming out of turn five, down the hill, around the kink of turn six, into seven and eight. Were wrongly accused of hacking and spinning there. He didn't spin. He had an engine failure and he retired in that spot. 2001 Spanish Grand Prix. Quite an emotional moment for Mika as well. Led that le race comfortably and his engine gave in on the very last lap. It would suck for any driver. Nicholas setting a new fastest lap at 17.7. He's in third place. I actually haven't given Nicholas enough credit, if I'm perfectly honest. He is driven superbly. He's on the podium. He's only one and a half seconds behind Baba Bowie. As Electric Blade overtakes Preferred, that was for P7. Now Andy Wu, Wu will be uh, Electric Blade's next target. Just in front there, but no, I haven't given any credit at all to Nicholas so far. I really should, because he is driven superbly. In third place, he started from 14th, if I remember. Yeah, started from 14th. He's up into third. That is a great effort. Very much keeping this championship fight alive in the constructors between Mercedes-Benz and Aston Martin. I'd say. From the way the leaderboard looks at the moment, that Mercedes will win the round, but with both Astons in the points, the fight is still very much alive between the two manufacturers. Credit as well to JCK, starting from 16th after not setting a valid lap time during qualifying. He has clawed his way up to 5th place, and... Mind you, there hasn't been any safety cars between the start of the race until now, so... No, those two have driven very well. Here comes Electric Blade into P6. Preferred stays behind Blade. So stays in 7th. 
fairly nice recovery as well from Profos. He had a spin at turn one after a collision with, I think it was KD. I'll have to look back on it. But he was well behind everybody and he's clawed his way back into the top 10 in 7th place. That's quite a respectable drive as well. Electric Blade up 5 positions from 11th to 6th. He's on those fresh soft tyres. Doing really nicely. He does some pretty solid drives out there. Get some pet Oh, Andy's off the circuit! Andy was off the circuit there at turn 8. Oh dear. On the other side from where you usually find them. Does he have damage? Puncture! Look! A front left puncture on the McLaren. So his tyre is given way with four to go. How old was his tyres? 19 laps. Ew. Alright. So Profodes. Might be in a bit of trouble. Is that Cameron? No, Maddie. He's getting out of the way. He's just trying to be nice here. Get out of everybody's way. Do his own thing. JCK. Has spun a turn two again. Oh my goodness me, JCK. Here comes... Oh, hello, Freddy. You're right up his chuff there. Around turn four. JCK goes a little bit deep. Freddy gets the over-under. He's alongside the Red Bull, heading into the hairpin. Turn five. Freddy holds it there. Still got a nose there, I think. Oh, no, JCK's in front. Oh, but JCK, after complimenting you on a nice drive, you make another mistake. Oh. Same place, too. Turn two. It's brutal. That section's just so brutal. That's Freddy... He's game. He's trying to look around the long way at the hairpin. He is... He's going to fight for this. He wants that P8. He wants it bad. Good stuff. That puts uh, Profodes up in position. He's into P6. Electric Blade has now made up six places. From P11 to P5. That's a fine effort as well. Hey, Freddy, he's gone by JCK. Hello, Matty, he's getting out of the way. I don't think this battle is... Oh, I said, to, I said that too soon. As a JCK had a whole heap of understeer there at turn two. He managed to keep it off the gravel, but he's lost a fair bit of time to Freddy. And Freddy, he's on seven lap old softs. So actually, they might not be too much better than 14 lap old hards. The soft tires really do wear out around here they become really average when they get towards the end of the race preferred still in the back of electric blade so he's not letting this battle end just yet keeping this very much alive Barmer in p4 he'll be happy with the points he's accumulating from here he's got three seconds worth of pens i think yep so he's cemented himself in fourth place he's a long way behind third but he's a long way in front of fifth next is nicholas lactifi who will take a spectacular podium so long as he keeps it within the white lines and not make any mistakes he's got 2.2 seconds to baba buoy which is cos cameron in front so uh, uh nicholas he'll be pretty pleased i imagine with this drive as jck and freddy well, they're not done yet it seems JCK retakes 8th place away from Freddy. Even though that battle, looking at the penalties, is pretty much done as JCK has 9 seconds worth of pens. Freddy has 3. So, yeah, Nicholas, he'll be on the podium. He'll be 2nd place because Baba Booey here, he's got 6 seconds worth of pens. So, Baba Booey won't be able to do anything about that. He'll secure a podium finish for Mercedes and with him and Barmer getting really good results I believe Mercedes would win the round here at Spain but it's been a superb effort from KD a one stop after qualifying well on the medium compound tyre qualifying third only a tenth and a half off pole position 
He's made this one-stop strategy work to perfection. It's been green flag running since the start of the race up until here the last lap. I'm quite surprised by that. And as a result, and also because of KD keeping out of trouble and driving very well, he's got a 10-second margin to Baba Bui, who has just got another three-second time penalty. Now, this has been an absolutely superb effort from KD. Just kept completely out of trouble, drove his own race, made no mistakes, and he'll take a very deserving win. Only a few corners to go for KD. Around turn 13 into turns 14 and 15 for the final time. Around turn 16, the final corner on the final lap. He comes up to the line. KD will win the Spanish Grand Prix here in Barcelona. A fine drive indeed. Baba Bui will cross the line in second, but he'll ultimately be demoted down to third place. Nicholas, he'll probably take driver of the day for that performance, making up 12 places over the course of this race. That is a fine effort, if ever I saw one. But Baba Bui, he'll complete the podium in third. Barmer in fourth, Electric Blade in fifth, Profodes a nice recovery. He actually finishes in the spot where he qualified, which is quite surprising considering what happened on the first lap. Kitten Petta in a fine P7, followed by Freddy, he finishes P8. Then JCK in ninth, making up seven places, then Cam in P10, Andy Wu will finish in 11th place, eventually. Then Lopez in P12, Bursey's already finished in 13th. Matty Robbo will just finish now in 14th with fastest lap, so he snags that point away. There's Andy crossing the line, and we'll just be waiting on Lopez now. There's a few corners left for Lopez. And the final turn, Ferrari driver will finish in 12th place. But there we are. Nice race comes to an end here at Barcelona. I said at the beginning of this, the racing here can be a bit boring, but uh, generally it's pretty solid. And I'd say the race here today at Barcelona was pretty solid. The driving here today was quite solid, especially from the front runners. Especially that man on screen, KD. Just kept out of trouble, made that one stop work, and took a dominant win. Nicholas clawed his way from 14th to 2nd, getting driver of the day. And Baba Bui, he put the car on pole position. Fortunately, penalties in the two-stop strategy just really not going his way. Unfortunately for him. Looking at the rest of the finishes, we have Barmer in 4th place, followed by Electric Blade. That's a great effort from 11th to 5th, then Profodes. Kit and Petter in P7, Fredhead making up 4 places to finish 8th, and uh, JCK making up 7 to finish 9th. That's also a, quite a solid effort. Andy qualified 3rd, finishing 10th. That's not a great day in the office for the McLaren driver. Cam from 7th to 11th, Lopez from 15th to 12th, so making up a few places, Bursey down in 13th, Matty Robbo, that, was, that would have been a long race for him, that's for sure, oh dear, he was having a horrid time of things, but he did snag fastest lap, so he got that, and there were three retirements over the course of this one, Dream, Motown and Express, all of them voluntarily retiring at the beginning of the race. So, 17 cars started this one, 14 finished, and it's another win for KD. He'll close the gap on his rivals, fighting for third in the Drivers' Championship. And there we are. I think that was rather a nice race, folks. I enjoyed that one. I don't know, with Spain, it's just... It's not bad here at Spain. It's not bad. Sometimes it is, but most of the time, not bad. I enjoyed that one. That KD taking the win. Nicholas, second. Baba Bui, I love that username, third. With Barman in fourth as well, that's really big points for Mercedes. But with Nicholas as second and Freddie finishing, what was it, eighth? Or was it seventh? 
I think it was seven. That'll be quite good points for Aston Martin, so Aston, they'll be pretty happy. But I don't think anyone would be happier than KD right now. I'm sure he'd be pretty pleased with his performance. So... With that pretty decent race out of the way, I think we can now finally end the stream. Certainly quite a nice one today. Everything worked quite nicely. We didn't have any major problems and uh, no, it was quite fun. But uh, yeah, with the race finally over, it's time for us to end the stream. Until next time, I've been Lane Everingham. Thank you all so much for watching. And we'll see you for round 22 of the championship at Sochi Autodrome for the Russian Grand Prix. In some ways, Sochi is rather similar to Spain. A lot of real-life negative connotations, but the racing in the virtual world, it's not the worst. So next week, probably pays to be optimistic. But um, also don't be surprised if we do end up getting a boring race uh, as well. But uh, it does pay to be optimistic at times. But um, until next week, it's goodbye.